Asbestos is derived from a Greek adjective meaning inextinguishable. It was referred to as the miracle fiber and is carried into modern times. Only in the last decade or so have we been willing to admit to the severe health hazards of using asbestos in our environment. With the admission of this factor, it is no longer wise, economical, or healthy to use asbestos. The need for abatement or operations and maintenance programs has increased the requirement for skilled technicians and contractors to identify and remove asbestos or put an operations and maintenance program in place. This program is designed to give a brief overview of the many particulars concerning these disciplines. It's not designed to make you an expert in the art and science of asbestos identification or removal. Asbestos is a mineral which occurs naturally in the environment. It is distinguishable by long, thin fibers. There are two groups of asbestos minerals. They are serpentine and amphibole. The serpentine group is most widely used and is the primary focus of our information. Chrysotile of the serpentine group is the most widely used type of asbestos. It's also known as white asbestos. Asbestos over the years has been used to make hundreds of products. Collectively, these products will be referred to as RACM, or Regulated Asbestos Containing Materials. The most common use has been for fireproofing and thermal insulation and as an acoustical plaster. To distinguish between types of asbestos, they'll be identified as friable and non-friable. Friable means the asbestos can be crushed with hand pressure and can easily be released into the air, therefore more hazardous to the general population. The EPA identifies three materials used in buildings. Surface materials, ACM sprayed or troweled on surfaces. This includes plasters and fireproofing insulation. Thermal system insulations, which is insulation used to inhibit heat transfer or prevent condensation on hot or cold transfer systems. Miscellaneous materials. These are largely non-friable products and materials such as floor tile, roofing felt, concrete pipes, outdoor siding, and fabric. The law requires that all materials suspected of being or containing asbestos must be identified. Generally, asbestos enters the body through inhalation or ingestion. Due to the structure of this element, inhalation of asbestos means the fiber becomes wedged or locked in the alveoli of the lungs. The alveoli are tiny, microscopic air sacs shaped much like a bunch of grapes. Because of the anatomical design of the alveoli, they are very prone to trapping elements of the asbestos fibers. Other impurities entering the body become easily trapped in these tiny sacs. The asbestos itself is not necessarily a specific carcinogenic, as it is a vehicle for trapping agents of a high carcinogenic nature. There is some disagreement in the medical community about this fact, but there is agreement that asbestos is like a tray on which highly carcinogenic agents find a home to grow and breed. There is verification that cigarette smokers who work with asbestos have a greater rate of lung cancer and or asbestosis than non-smokers. Actually, a rate of 50 to 90 times more. The fibers act as a place for the nicotine, tars, and other foreign substance to rest and create havoc in the body. Let's now discuss the qualifications and functions of building inspectors relating to asbestos. Inspectors are responsible for visually inspecting the area to identify the locations of all suspected asbestos-containing building materials. The inspector is responsible for assessing physical characteristics of the ACBM and the building. As a manager planner, one must be able to assess the degree of hazard and plan for removal of the ACBM. The recommended qualifications of a building inspector should be a high school graduate and have attended an approved three-day training course as well as achieved a minimum passing score on the written test. The recommended qualifications of a management planner would have the same qualifications as a building inspector and be a registered architect, engineer, or related scientific professional. The building inspection involves review of architectural and as-built plans, work change orders, and other records for the specification of any materials which contain asbestos. The inspector inspects buildings for friable ACM and materials of a like nature, delineates homogeneous areas, and develops a sampling plan for bulk samples of materials assumed to be of asbestos or asbestos-containing materials. The inspector collects samples and has them analyzed for asbestos by an accredited lab. 
collects information on the physical condition and location of all ACBM and other characteristics of the building which may affect the likelihood that ACBM may be disturbed and that the fibers may be released into the air. Certainly each state has its own legal liabilities. However, generally the building inspector is liable for breach of contract if the services are not properly performed. The inspector should make a bid or estimate according to the actual square footage of the building and not rely on drawings. The building may have changed since the initial drawings were made. The timing for completion of the inspection must be accurate. The areas which are to be inspected should be clearly stated and understood by the contractor, inspector, and building owner. The areas to be sampled should be clearly identified and documented. Of course, state-of-the-art sampling must be used to protect the inspector's findings. Record keeping is of utmost importance. Accurate records mean protecting your liability. Records last for the life of the building and should be retained even after the building has been demolished. Without proper records, there is no defense in the event of legal action. The asbestos abatement survey should be well planned. The survey should address the following. Number one, general introduction. Number two, pre-bid meeting. Number three, building access. Number four, time for completion. Number five, time of inspection. Number six, form of agreement. Number seven, scope of the work. Number eight, submission of the final report. Number nine, recommendations. And number 10, budget estimates. Without trying to identify all the legal aspects and liabilities of building inspections, suffice it to say what you do is on record. How you perform your responsibilities can be scrutinized in a court of law, so make sure you perform these duties competently and with a standard of care. You have to justify your actions and opinions with facts and certainly maintain accurate records. Discuss legal issues with your attorney and insurance matters with your broker. A building inspector should understand the interrelationship of building systems. Recognize where asbestos might be used and where it should be located. Buildings are made of four basic components. Number one, heating, cooling, and ventilation. Number two, plumbing. Number three, electrical, and number four, structural. You should know buildings and the many intricacies involved. When you're performing a survey, be sure everyone knows what you're doing and why you're there. Don't allow untrained people in the area you're inspecting and enforce any requirements for personal protection when required. Keep people informed, but not alarmed. Some of the pre-inspection planning that's required include contacting the building owner or representative. There should be an asbestos program manager and the original building architect if possible. Contact the building manager and maintenance manager if possible. Try to obtain as much information as possible before the actual inspection. There are basically two types of inspections, the walkthrough and the specific sampling inspections. All inspections should be regulated by the desired result. Remember that asbestos can only be identified by a scientific lab test. During your inspections, make personal protection mandatory for all persons on the inspection. Keep your guidelines rigid. Protect yourself and anyone else in these areas. It's the professional thing to do. There's nothing more important to protect yourself, other than personal protective equipment, than accurate and detailed record keeping of the asbestos survey. Report writing should be detailed as possible. Important information includes when and why you were there. Write down what you did, how you did it, and even what you didn't do. Be specific and make an accurate report. Include who, what, when, where, how, and why, but also what you didn't do. Oftentimes, omission is much worse than what you actually did. Last but not least, the inspection report. It should include the name and signature of the accredited inspector, state of accreditation and accreditation number, building location, homogeneous area where samples were collected, and the exact location of each bulk sample, dates that samples were collected, and the identification that the material was friable or non-friable, surface material, thermal system insulation, or miscellaneous material. Your training and knowledge will guide you in the performance of your job.
but it's important to remember that accurate and factual records are one of the most important parts of the job. Thank you.